Okay, so hi, my name is Doug Lyon, I'm a media lecturer at Brighton University. I spent a lot of my life very afraid of violence. I was a, I was a punk in 1977 in the countryside before people knew what it was and a lot of blokes wanted to beat me up for being different. So violence was something that always felt very really close to me around me in my life. Somehow or other, touch wood, at nearly 50 I have never had a fight in my life, never hit anybody or been hit anybody, been hit by anybody in anger. But I've always felt like it was something around me a lot and it's something that's really fascinated me. I did quite a lot of martial arts to get over my fear of violence. But the thing that kind of really clicked something for me about it was uh, there's a guy called Robert Bly who's a Jungian psychoanalyst who wrote a book called Iron John. And in that he's got this great key quote that says, men communicate best in a ritualistic space. So I had a lot of mates who were into the same music and the same scene as me who loved football and I never really got it. And then I started to realise I was missing out on something and I didn't really know what it was. I've also met people who were into serious football, organised football violence, who seem to be very intelligent people in their everyday lives. And I've always found that really bemusing. But then I started to really think about this men communicate best in a ritualistic space thing. And what I see in football is if you look at the behaviour of blokes around it rather than the sport itself, blokes can be affectionate with each other, they can cry, they can laugh, they can be ecstatic, they can be all kind of community huggy, they can be shocked, they can commiserate together. It's like it's almost like every emotion possible for a bloke to be is available in that arena without any fear of people going, oh, you fucking gay bastard or any of that kind of stuff. It sort of makes it safe because of the ritual. So for me, that's really interesting. Well, I'm not really interested in the football side of it. I can see people get a lot of pleasure out of it. It doesn't float my boat but I do think it's really fascinating when an arena is created where something goes on around it in behavioural terms and I don't know why that's just in football and not in rugby or cricket or I don't really know what that's about but it is really interesting. Um, do you think it's like something to do with the spectacle that football's so big in the UK that um, but going along to the game it's almost like a type of religion for some people? that they believe in it so much they want to fight their cause for their team. Well, yeah, no, that's an interesting comparison because what religion is made up of is a belief system and a set of behaviours and rules and regulations of what you're allowed to do or not do. And then around that, there is something that creates a feeling of connection to other people or to something more abstract, a spirit or God. I uh, guess with football, there's definitely a ritual around it and rules and regulations and there's a space set up to to come together to, I mean, if you look at, somebody did a, a, a great third year dissertation last year about are modern day music festivals a replacement for religious pilgrimages? And if you look at festival music festival audiences and what they do and compare it to religious pilgrimages audience, it looks the same a lot of the time it's amazing and I think you know people again it's something I don't claim to understand the level of obsession and worship that people have for a football team for me is out of proportion with, with what it is and I don't think that is distinct to just football I think you do get that in rugby or cricket or probably lots of other sports but there's something about football violence that's definitely part of football and there's something about it being so much a part of our culture in the UK that it's really, I don't know, it's really something. I mean, I, you know, Celtic Rangers, you know, that kind of warfare when you get that, or Blackpool Preston, which was my home zone. I used to go to punk gigs in the 70s and they brought a coach from Blackpool and a coach from Preston and they'd get off the coach kick the shit out of each other, smash the coaches up and get taken away. They hadn't even been to the gig. I was just like, hey, I don't what? I don't get it. I just didn't get that. So I'd be really curious to see what you find out 
about this and what people's motivation is. I mean, I know Fight Club's only just a film, but I do think there is that Fight Club sensibility in, in it somewhere. There's something about feeling very alive around that. Do you think there's something quite consensual about um how they organise with the opposition to meet up away from everything else and actually just come Well, for me, that's the same thing as uh, weird sexual practices that people have with each other. If, if you agree to do something with another person who's of a reasonably sane mind and over 18 and they want to do that as well and nobody else is harmed during the process, whatever floats your boat, as far as I'm concerned, so that I think consensuality is really important. If it was happening in the middle of a town or it was hurting other people or other people's property, then I think that would be very different. But I think that's what makes it really interesting is that people who want to have a fight go to all this trouble to organise it so it isn't hurting anybody else or damage. I don't know whether it damages other things. I don't really know about that. But, but that's quite clean. I mean, that is like Fight Club, isn't it, for real? this didn't happen you weren't here so yeah I don't know it's not so strange as folk I don't understand it but I'd like to is that kind of shite you want yeah yeah <coughs> what part do you feel the authorities play in fan related violence and uh, well other others have said that they can help provoke situations yeah, I mean, I think it's a similar situation with riots, isn't it, and riot police. I mean, if, if you've got a load of people who are highly wired, charged up, already feeling a bit kind of aggressive, maybe with a bit of alcohol in the mix or whatever, and then you get a lot of people feeling like that, they're kind of looking for somewhere to channel it. So if what you get is a, a load of blokes in uniforms with protective gear on doing their kind of, well, we're, we're harder than you. I mean, that's just a setup, isn't it? It's, it's just obvious that that's going to... I mean, I don't really know what the solution is in, in that respect because, you know, like controlling a riot, like, you know, you, there comes a point where you've got to bring in force. But usually the force does seem to make it worse because it gives somebody something to fight against, particularly if it's, you know, an anti-authority kind of riot, then the authorities appear and they're just, that just kind of kicks it all off, doesn't it? But, um, I mean, I think what your project is looking at in some ways is the effect of testosterone, pure and simple, on the most simplistic level, a blo bloke's getting charged up, as soon as another bloke squares up to them, it, you can just accelerate. And a lot of it's very territorial as well. So it's like somebody saying, I have a right to do my thing here. And then somebody else comes along and goes, no, you, no, you don't. We're not, we're not giving you that right. We're taking it off you by force. How could that not escalate it? Yeah, um, well, we've also, um, like one of the fans has said that um, he fights because he's proud of, that he's from Brighton, proud of where he comes from. So, what's your view on that? Well, I think we live in an age where 50 years ago, you know, certainly my mum and dad remember a time when there were, were no cars on the street. That's how much we've changed in the last two generations. And when I was a lad, you know, it wasn't very long ago, really. It feels like a long time ago, but we're only talking three decades and a bit ago. Nobody had phones, everybody played out with the mates, all the lads were out playing football, you came in at nine o'clock, you came home from school, had your tea, went out to play with your mates on your bike or down the park or whatever, and you belonged to your local little lad posse, you were down the park doing your thing, and what's happened more and more with internet and kind of online engagement and something's happened around communities where young people don't know elders anymore. Um, family units are more dispersed. I think everybody, I do believe everybody at heart wants to feel like they belong to something. And I think to belong to something physical, that's very physical these days, is a kind of antidote to the online world of, I mean, I think they're sort of, I've seen lads play like the 
what's it called warcraft world of warcraft what's it called that kind of stuff and they're running around shooting things but they've got their little headsets on and they're all chatting like really politely to each other as they blow each other up and i sort of think that's kind of lovely because they would just be sat in their bedroom in the dark otherwise so although it doesn't seem that sociable i think it is but i don't think you can replace human physical contact and i think that's a big part of your project um, so what do you think about um, the firm is almost seen as part of a family for um, this one firm that we've interviewed? Well, I think family, traditionally family was about blood ties and community was about locality. And like I say, I think we've kind of let go of a lot of that now. I mean, I know quite a lot of people who don't really have a lot of contact with their brother or their sisters, let alone their mums or dads or their grandparents. They just leave home and do their own thing. Oh, thanks very much. See, I'm off with my life. And I think that's really sad. That's very different in a lot of the rest of the world. I do think what you're looking at is something to do with this country, UK culture. Maybe it's not even UK, maybe it's English. I think the Scottish, Irish and Welsh are more family, local, community based than we are. So it doesn't surprise me that people come up with a solution to feeling... I mean, this might, might be too deep for your project, but I think a lot of people feel lonely in their lives. I think a lot of people feel, people feel lonely, a bit overwhelmed by not really knowing what they're doing with their life. Maybe they haven't got a lot of hope of the future. If being with a load of other blokes in a very physical way makes them feel part of a family and like they belong, and they're alive, very alive in, that, in those moments, because it's very physical and, and dangerous, I can understand the appeal of that on an intellectual level. Don't don't fancy it myself, but you know, get, I get it. Um. Also, it's a bonding experience, isn't it? I mean, family. You, you have your blood family, and then you have like you lot are doing what you're doing, making a video is a bonding. Exp you're doing male bonding. You will be closer to each other by the end of this production because you've done something that's a bit like don't really know what we're doing, and then you work it out and you feel good about yourself. You know, surviving something makes you close to somebody, doesn't it? And um, so, have you had any sort of experience of like, have you ever been to football? Like, this is just like punt in the dark. Have you ever been to like football where something started or been in a crowd of people where it just started like that? I've not really. I've only been to one football match ever, and that was when I was a kid. So I can't really compare it to that. But I've been to thousands of gigs and festivals and being in crowds a lot and there's definitely a tipping point there's something that happens in a crowd where when you physically get a surge and the, your, your body moves whether you want it to or not because everybody else has moved that your adrenaline your fight or flight thing just kicks in because you're suddenly not in control of your body you're stuck in this mass of people doing something and if that starts to feel aggressive you can feel it you can taste it in the air i mean it's really scary but it's also i can imagine how f you could flick that to being exciting um what i've noticed at f gigs and festivals now is that they have in the main arena there's always a mixing desk sort of halfway down and now they've started putting these barriers out from the mixing desk so it just it gives an extra row stops that surge coming forward i don't know why they didn't do that 20 years ago it's a brilliant idea it really helps so i don't know if that's relevant to your project but i do think there are solutions to stopping things escalating that can be put in there in advance and i think breaking it up a little bit there's something about that physical surge or everybody does something all at once that you kind of lose your individual control really and it doesn't surprise me that riots break out in situations like that yeah, um, everyone that we've spoken to has seemed to f seems to think that if um, someone wants to go and have a fight, then they should be able to go and have a fight. And it sh if it's not involving anyone who doesn't want to be involved, then it should be it should be all right. Well, that is the same as kind of strange sexual practices, isn't it? Some people like to nail other people's willies to tables, and I guess if that's what floats your boat, arguably it's fits consensual then what's the problem well i think some of the times the problem is mental health issues and i think sometimes the problem is people 
get kind of coerced into things by being egged on by their peer group or if you want to be part of our gang you've got to do I mean it's Hell's Angel culture was very into this wasn't it you know to be enrolled into a Hell's Angel chapter you had to go through a whole series of you know everybody pisses on your jacket or well, you have to do whatever stupid things you have to do macho bullshit really as far as I'm concerned but it's like your, I mean, I've seen your interview with a guy who fights, and I can see, I can really, I think it's a really great interview because I can see what he gets out of it is a feeling of belonging. And he talks about how he kind of did a runner the first time, or he didn't hack it the first time, he got scared, nearly blew it, his membership. But that experience was like, okay, I, I want this too much to not do it. And he went back and kind of, got amongst it so there's a lesson in that isn't there you know he didn't really want to do that he was scared which is a normal human response but he overrode that because he wanted to be part of that club so yes it is consensual and I don't really care if a lot of people want to fight each other in a field away from me and not hurt anybody else I don't care but is that something that needs to be monitored in some way? I don't really know. Because I think there's a mental health issue in there, personally. And I think there's issues in there that are damaging on lots of different levels, not just the physical fighting level. It makes me wonder what those blokes are like as fathers to their kids when they become so desensitised to physical violence. When their kids are naughty, they're going to give them a harder slap than they might have done already because they're used to that that worries me you know are they going to be more aggressive in everyday life somebody cuts them up on the road you know when you get used to extreme aggression and violence like that i think it desensitizes you same as watching hardcore pornography i mean it's it's a big thing in our society now is people aren't satisfied with their sex lives anymore because they've been brought up and watching this strange pumped up reenactment of a fantasy thing of what sex is supposed to be like and then of course it isn't like that because that isn't it, that's a made up thing and then people are like well I'm not turned on anymore well that's because you filled your head with something that's not real I mean that is, you know, going and doing all that fighting stuff it's not an everyday thing and I do think yeah, I do think there's a consequence to doing that but I don't think I don't I don't think you should stop it either. So I don't really know. It's complicated. Would you have known that there was a Brighton sort of firm if we hadn't all done this? Um, well, I've I've been around the block a few times in my life, so I've I realised that there are always other layers of society around me from the ones that I choose to engage with and Brighton's well known for having a lot of different you know different worlds within it and um, organized violence has always been a part of Brighton I mean it's had a mob scene it's long good Friday it's you know it's films made about it that kind of violence I mean one thing that I would say in relation to just watching your psychologists clips which are really interesting, is what I've noticed as a teacher over the last 20 years is that young women come to my class relatively empowered f for their lives. They, like the feminist battles, have won some of the battle. They haven't won the war because they still don't get equal pay and there's a lot of issues they need sorting out. But young women now are quite powerful much more powerful than they were 20 years ago my experience of young men is it's much harder to know how to be like the funny clever hard routine that a lot of lads get stuck in at school doesn't really work anymore so what i notice about a lot of lads is they go very quiet and sort of have to watch quite a lot and then it's like well where's the role models of how to be a strong independent respected and respectful bloke where are those role models they're not in football they're not in pop stars and they're not in actors which is where we tend to look for our role models who do we look to to some a bloke that i'd like to be like i think that's a missing part of our society so that might have been your uncle in the olden days or it might have been your dad or it might have been 
the bloke around the corner in the local shop who fixed motorbikes or something you know I mean I think things were simpler then and I, th I think it's not it's not surprising that blokes want to own their sense of identity of being a bloke by fighting like like you're looking at it doesn't surprise me that people do it, it surprises me that blokes don't do it more actually because I think blokes have got a lot to be angry about these days and it's harder to be a bloke you don't even know what to you know you try opening a, I mean, I shouldn't really say this on camera you try opening a door for a woman these days and it's complicated you can't be a gentleman without you know it's like what what you have to you know it's people it used to be simple and now I think it's complicated and I think fighting makes things really simple it's us against them and we're our own little thing and you're the other thing but in secret you actually like each other because you've agreed to do the same thing and you're all into football I mean what's bloody hell I mean it's just people wearing different shirts on a football field really you're into the same thing and it is consensual there's an agreement and maybe that's alright blah blah blah